Y'all subscribe to the last ones at the Bar Boxing Channel, man. We got some boxing fans out there. He was going against Yaniski, the Monster Gonzalez. Um, Ozerto sported a record of 42-0 with 28 KOs. They were fighting yesterday in San Antonio, Texas. And for Gonzalez, he was 21-3 uh, with 17 KOs. And the interesting thing about him going into this fight was that he was fighting his fourth southpaw in a row. And, you know, when the fight started, he came out to the, the song, The Final Countdown by Europe. I thought that was a good twist, you know, as he entered the ring. And um, as far as Zerto coming into this fight, as he, since he's moved up to light heavyweight, he's, he's, he's been showing a lot more pop in his punches, you know, as of late, because he was getting a lot of, you know, 12 round decisions, the latter part of the time that he was still at 168. And so, you know, he just had the knockout of Sullivan Barrera. Um, he fought Alfonso Gomez. I want to say that was like a 10th round KO. And, you know, he's been, you know, looking a little bit more heavy fisted, you know, as opposed to what he was looking like at 168. Also, he mentioned that, you know, coming into the fight or going into the weigh-in, he was like, I'm still, I still can eat steaks and things like that now, you know, as opposed to what he was able to do going into those fights at 168. So he feels a lot more solid, a lot more strong first round. But actually in the first round, I gave it to Gonzalez because he landed several big right hands and, and a few solid combos. He was looking really good and sharp early on. And I felt like Gonzalez, he was looking at this, like this is his last opportunity, this is his last hurrah, you know, to fight some of these upper echelon guys in the 175 pound weight division. This dude is a big, solid, you know, rough and tough 175 pound fighter. And I'm gonna talk about how that is gonna look for Zerto against some of the other big 175 pound fighter. Now, he just beat another, you know, big guy at the weight for the weight in um, Barrera, but I think Barrera was kind of, you know, on his last leg because he took a lot of punishment recently. And that wasn't the case for Gonzalez. Gonzalez looked really fresh in terms of his punch resistance. Second round, Ramirez, he was in the pocket, you know, showing those good skills, dodging and landing. Um, and so, you know, I gave him round two. Round three, it was nice pivoting from Zerto. You know, Gonzalez landed a, a few good shots and then just out the blue, the referee, without any warnings, just one warning, you know, he deducted a point from Gonzalez, which was interesting. I thought that that fight, that round could have went either way, but you definitely have to give the Zerto because of the point deduction. Round four, um, big shot after big shot for Zerto. Um, round five, I thought Gonzalez may have won that round, at least won the first two two minutes of the round, and then Zerto took over. So if you're just looking at it from the standpoint of who won most of the round, you would have to give it to Gonzalez, but you know, towards the end of the round, you know, the last impressions that you have with Zerto, you know, putting in work. So round five could have went either way, but I gave it to Gonzalez because he won more than round six. Um, Ramirez was, was boxing off the back foot and he started to respect the power and strength of Gonzalez because Gonzalez wasn't going anywhere. But Gonzalez took a lot of punishment and, and was able to hang in there. I thought the fight by now would have been over with, but he was showing such resiliency and such strength, his recuperative powers was was really, you know, on point. Um, but he still, like, throughout the fight, his balance was off a little bit, but he was hanging in there, and those shots were so powerful that, you know, Zerto just couldn't get him out of there. Round seven, that was another good round for Gonzalez, and I thought that he rocked Zerto a little bit in that round. And then also, he kind of rocked him with, with a headbutt. Like, that was a vicious headbutt, but some big right hands also landed during the seventh round. Round eight, um, Zerto was boxing from the outside, and he began to pot shot and dominate Gonzalez. Round nine, I gave it to Zerto. And then finally, he ended up finishing things off with a barrage of punches, and the referee stopped the fight in round 10. So all in all, it was a good fight, great win. I shouldn't say great win for Zerto, um, because going into the fight, I think most people thought that he would get Yaniski, the monster Gonzalez, out of there sooner. But, you know, upon further review, as you looked at how, you know, good Gonzalez looked. And if you think about in the past that, 
they had Gonzalez up there. He was one of those guys that had, you know, a lot of potential. And if you look at his record, all of those KOs that he has that, you know, you can't take him lightly. You know, he is like maybe a B-level, B-plus level fighter, you know, at his best. And so when you look at it from that standpoint, it was a good win for um, Zerto. Now, moving forward, what I was talking about earlier, I'm a little bit skeptical on Zerto going against Bivol. Not Bivol, better be right now. And the reason why is because of the physical strength and power of better B. He's going to be even more stronger and more powerful than Gonzalez. Better B, the great thing about him and what some people don't notice is the fact that he's able to throw some powerful punches, heavy shots, and he's not like... It's not telegraphed at all. It's just like little st- little stuff that he throws in terms of like the inches in term, you know, for how he's landing those shots. And if he's touching you, then it's going to be problematic. And that goes hand in hand with the 17 wins, 17 KOs. That's how he gets guys out of there. It's going to be an accumulation of punches a lot of times because you just can't withstand that amount of punishment for 12 rounds. And if you get touched by him, and I don't see Zerto in a situation where he's not going to be getting touched. You know, he's going to be getting touched a little bit. And just that little bit of being touched is more than enough for better be to get him or anyone else out of there. And so that's the trouble that I see for him if he faces Arthur better be anytime soon. Now, I think him and Bivol, I think that their skills are comparable. I think that they're in the same situation. Both of them aren't really the biggest punchers in the world. They both have really good skills. And that fight, I think, really can pretty much go either way. Also, those guys are, like, physically around the same weight and height. You know, Bill, to me, could fight at 168. And then you have um, Zerto, who's coming up from 168. So they, like, equally yoked to me. So that should be a really good fight. Hopefully they make that fight pretty soon. You know, the 175-pound weight division is one of those weight divisions where they could actually do just like a mini tournament. You know, you got Joe Smith over there. If he's successful in his next bout, you can have him and better be next. And then you can have Zerto and Bivol. And then the winners, you know, fight each other at the end of the year. You know, and I think that that would be um, something that they might want to consider in the 170-pound, 75-pound weight class. You guys have anything? Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Peace.